Hello, and welcome to another Story Explained video. In this one, we'll be looking at the highly anticipated sequel to Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil 8, or Village as it's also known. Resident Evil Village definitely wasn't as scary as Resident Evil 7, but it still had its moments of nerve-shredding terror, especially in one particular part of the game. The story itself was a great continuation on from 7, and also expanded on the character of Ethan, which was really cool. Anyway, let's get into the video. Make sure, if you're enjoying this video, to like and subscribe, as it really helps the channel. So let's start with a short recap of 7, and then, as with all my Story Explained videos, will then lead into the basic plot of Resident Evil Village. You ready? Let's go. In Resident Evil 7, Ethan receives an email from his wife Mia, who went missing three years earlier whilst working secretly for an organisation called The Connections, stating she is in Dolby, Louisiana. Ethan finds Mia in a mansion owned and inhabited by the Baker family. Long story short, Mia and her colleague were transporting a bioweapon in the form of a little girl named Evelyn to a different facility. While well, hell breaks loose, the ship carrying them is destroyed and washes up in Louisiana. Evelyn and Mia were found by Jack Baker, who brought them back to their house, but Evelyn infects them all with a black mould called Mutamycete. Ethan managed to cure Mia, and after a long ordeal, Ethan kills Evelyn with a special necrotoxin before doing battle with her. Ethan and Mia are saved by Chris Redfield and the BSAA, and are flown out of the area by the Umbrella Corporation, who have rebranded as Blue Umbrella, who are working in conjunction with the BSAA. Now, this leads us into Resident Evil Village. I have put chapters in this video, so if you know the basic storyline, you can just skip to the next part. Three years have passed since the Dolby incident, and the story starts with Ethan sitting and listening to Mia reading a rather creepy book to their daughter Rose while she falls asleep. Ethan notes that the story is a little bit scary to be reading to their six-month-old daughter. After putting Rose to bed, Ethan goes downstairs and him and Mia have an argument. He mentions that the BSEA moved Mia and Ethan somewhere, and Ethan mentions that he's had military training. He says they need to speak about what happened in Dolby, but Mia doesn't want to talk about it. All of a sudden, Mia is shot on the shoulder and is brutally gunned down. Ethan takes cover, but the table is ripped away and there stands Chris Redfield, who puts another five shots into Mia. Chris then takes Rose and Ethan away. Ethan protests, but they knock him down. He then wakes up to a phone ringing, and it seems the transport carrying him has been attacked and Rose has been taken. He answers the phone, but demands to know where Rose is, but gets no answers. He wanders down a path in the woods and eventually comes across a deserted village, with an ominous castle looming in the background. Ethan encounters a man named Grigory, who hands Ethan a gun just as his house is swarmed by some kind of monsters outside. Grigory is sadly killed, and Ethan is pulled underneath the house which is full of bodies, presumably the villagers. The monsters are revealed as lichens, and one of them bites two of Ethan's fingers clean off. After a tense fight, Ethan comes across a shack with a radio, telling any survivors to go to Louisa's house. Ethan begins to make his way there, but is ambushed this time by large groups of lichens, led by the intimidating Urias. Before they can kill Ethan, some bells ring in the distance, and all the lichens run off. Ethan spots an old lady who tells him Rose is somewhere in the village. Near to Louisa's house, Ethan comes across Elena and her father Leonardo. Leonardo has been cut by one of the monsters and is gravely injured. The three of them make it to Louisa's house, and Louisa makes mention of the village being quiet and devout, and then the monsters seem to come out of nowhere. The group pray and seem to be praying to a certain Mother Miranda. Leonardo then goes crazy, as he's presumably succumbing to the infection, killing Louisa and the others. Elena and Ethan escape the now burning house, but Leonardo pursues them and Leonardo and Elena fall to their death. Ethan leaves the house to see what appears to be Mother Miranda killing one of the villagers, Julian, and then she disappears. Ethan follows his hunch, heads for the castle as he believes Rose to be there, but just as he's about to enter the castle, a man named Heisenberg catches Ethan and delivers him to the group known as the Four Lords and Mother Miranda herself. The Four Lords are Lady Alcina Domitresque, Donna Beneviento and her weird creepy doll Angie, Salvatore Moreau, and lastly the man we just met, Karl Heisenberg. Domitresque and Heisenberg are arguing over who gets to kill Ethan. Domitresque offers Miranda cups of Ethan's blood, whilst Heisenberg offers to put on a show. Miranda eventually sides with Heisenberg, which aggravates Domitresque. Ethan is made to run for his life, and manages to survive being ground into nothing by spikes. While making the other lords assume that he is dead, Ethan continues his journey into the castle. It is here that Ethan meets a new friend, the Duke, who is a travelling merchant and buys and sells items. After a short conversation, Ethan heads into the castle, but he is captured by Lady Domitresque's three daughters, Bella, Cassandra, and Daniela, who deliver him to their mother. Lady Domitresque seems surprised that Ethan survived Heisenberg's games, and informs her daughters to hang Ethan up by his hands on hooks. She then leaves with her daughters to inform Mother Miranda of the situation. Ethan realises they will likely return at some point, so he gets free, rather painfully, but realises he needs four heads for the statues in order to escape the castle. 
He meets the Duke again, who informs him that Rose would likely be in Lady Domitresque's chambers, so Ethan heads up there, but whilst he is on his way, he fights Bella. It seems that the three daughters are weakened by cold air, and this is found out when Ethan fires a stray shot which hits the window, allowing him to kill Bella. He arrives outside Lady Domitresque's chambers, and overhears a conversation between Lady Domitresque and Mother Miranda. This call enrages her, and she throws her dresser in anger and walks off. Ethan enters the room and realises that Rose isn't there, and upon trying to escape the room, he is confronted by Lady Domitresque, who literally pushes Ethan through the floor to the dungeons. After making his way to the dungeons, Ethan is taken completely by surprise, as Lady Domitresque sneaks up behind him and chops his hand off. Upon regathering himself, Ethan makes it to some kind of lift, escaping from Lady Domitresque, and reattaches his hand using the magic healing juice. All in a day's work. Anyway, Ethan finds all the remaining pieces for the statues and kills the two remaining daughters. He uses the statues to escape the castle, finds a dagger. He's confronted by Lady Domitresque, who informs him that he has ruined everything, stabbing him with her claws, but Ethan returns the favour by plunging the dagger into her side. This forces the transformation in Lady Domitresque into a grotesque mutated form. After a battle, Lady Domitresque is defeated and at the exit of the castle, Ethan takes a mysterious yellow flask. Following a brief stroll through an underground cave, Ethan finds the old woman again, chanting. Ethan demands to know where Rose is, but the old woman responds, saying she will be traded life for life. She also mentions that the path he seeks may be opened by the crests of the four families. Underneath these crests is something familiar. The Umbrella logo. Ethan comes across an area next to the village which is called the Altar. He approaches the Duke, who tells a horrified Ethan that the yellow flask contains his daughter's head. The Duke mentions to Ethan that Rose has powers, and that he shouldn't worry, as her essence remains. He tells Ethan to find a house with a red chimney. There, he can find a key which can help him obtain three remaining flasks, all being held by the three remaining lords. One by one, Ethan battles through the two lords, Don of Beneviento and Salvatore Moreau, obtaining the flasks. Heisenberg makes Ethan fight through the Lycan stronghold and defeat Urias before he can retrieve the last flask. After he has all four flasks, he has to use them to obtain the giant's chalice, needed to activate the pathway to Heisenberg's factory. In the factory, Ethan is greeted by Heisenberg, who mentions that Ethan has been used by Miranda as a test to see if he is strong enough to be part of her family and to dispose of the four lords for her as they are no longer needed. Heisenberg states that his intention is to use Rose to defeat Miranda, to which Ethan obviously objects, stating that his daughter is not a weapon. Ethan is pushed into the lower depths of the factory by Heisenberg and has to fight his way to the top, only to see Heisenberg mutate and throw him all the way back down again. He goes into the room, but comes face to face with Chris. Ethan now demands answers. Chris gives in and reveals to Ethan that he wouldn't shoot Mia. He mentions that Miranda was impersonating Mia and that's why they shot her. He explains that everything in the village is a result of Miranda's life's work. The lichens and all the monsters were a result of Miranda's experiments with the mold. Chris gives Ethan a metal polymer tank which cannot be affected by Heisenberg's influence on metal objects. Heisenberg gains the edge momentarily, but before he can kill Ethan, Chris blows up the factory, destroying Heisenberg's metal army. Heisenberg is visibly rattled by this, calling Chris a boulder-punching asshole. Ethan finally defeats Heisenberg, Chris calls him and tells him to wait there, but Miranda turns up right at that moment, mimicking Mia. She tells Ethan that the Rose is the perfect successor to Evelyn, who was a defect. She also reveals herself to be the old lady from before, then surprises Ethan and rips his heart out. Chris soon learns of Ethan's death and preps his team, the Hound Wolf Squad, to go into the village with the goal of terminating Miranda and saving Rose. Chris looks through a scope and it appears that the BSAA, which stands for the Bioterrorism Security Assessment Alliance, have also sent soldiers to the village. After destroying a structure which protected the ceremony site, Chris heads down into a hole and comes face to face with the brother of Urias, who is guarding something down there. After defeating this giant, Chris manages to find the root of the mold which looks like a fetus. He attaches a bomb to it, but wants to kill Miranda before detonating it because of what she did to Ethan. Chris finds a lab full of information, which we'll discuss more in depth in a bit, Long story short, this is all about Miranda's own daughter, Eva, who died years ago, and Miranda wants to use Rose to resurrect Eva. At the end of the lab, Chris finds a locked door, and behind that locked door, Mia. Chris, of course, has to check it's not Miranda, but yes, it's the real Mia. Chris informs Mia that Ethan is dead, and she understandably lashes out at him, as he promised they'd be safe after they were moved to Europe. Mia then drops this bombshell on Chris. I tried to keep this a secret, but... You don't understand how special he is. 
Ethan wakes up somewhere and has a vision of Evelyn who tells him that he was actually killed by Jack Baker in Dolby three years earlier and then revived by the mold. That he has always been dead, that his entire body is literally just made up of mold. After this brief chat, Ethan wakes up in the Duke's carriage and Ethan asks the Duke to take him to the ceremony site and the Duke takes him there. Duke bids Ethan farewell and Ethan has a final confrontation with Miranda whose attempts to resurrect her daughter using the four flasks and the mold have failed, as Rose is just eventually reborn as Rose. This causes Miranda's powers to fade. Miranda is devastated, but surprised to see Ethan alive. Chris shoots Miranda, allowing Ethan to grab Rose, but Miranda takes Rose back, absorbing her. Ethan fights with Miranda and defeats her. He grabs Rose but collapses, as with Miranda dead, his own mold is deteriorating too. Chris wakes him up and helps him, tries to help them escape, but Ethan sacrifices himself and offers to detonate the bomb to save everyone else. As Chris makes it back to the chopper, he gives Rose to Mia, tells the pilot they all need to leave, and as they ascend and fly away from the village, Ethan detonates the bomb, killing himself, destroying the village, and also destroying the root of the mold. Chris tells Mia that he tried to save Ethan, but Ethan offered to sacrifice himself. Finally, Chris is called over by a member called K9, who informs him that the BSAA didn't even send soldiers, they sent bioweapons. Chris tells the pilot to plot a course for BSAA Europe headquarters, as someone needs to pay. The game then finishes out with Rosemary, now grown up, on a bus. She visits Ethan's grave, telling him that she has more tests coming up. She is interrupted by a mysterious man in a suit who tells Rosemary that she is needed. He taunts her by calling her Evelyn, and Rose doesn't take kindly to this. She threatens the man, giving us a clue to how much power she possesses. A sniper seems to be watching from a distance, ready to take Rose out. As they're driving off, a figure appears in the road. Then it ends, telling us that the father's story is now done. Oh, well, that's a lot to discuss and unpack. It's super complicated and there's loads to the story, but here we go. There will be a lot of information in this video. Of course, like I said before, I'll add chapters so you can see the different topics we discuss, but I guess the first thing to talk about would be where the game is actually located. The village in Resident Evil 8 is a fictional village set in Romania, Eastern Europe. We can see evidence for this, such as the houses being traditional Romanian houses. The Romanian currency is Le or Lu. The castle is based off the Peles castle in Romania, and the name Domitresc is Romanian. Another clue is that the dish Mia, well, Miranda, is cooking at the start is a chorba de legume, which is a Romanian dish. Now, those of you familiar with history will be familiar with the 1918 pandemic called the Spanish flu, which lasted until 1920. Well, this village was also ravaged by the Spanish flu, and the village suffered so many deaths that the villagers were forced to bury loved ones outside of the village graveyard. Believe it or not, despite her young looks, Miranda is actually over 100 years old at the point that Ethan arrives at the village. She is originally from the village and had a daughter called Eva in 1909. One such victim of the previously mentioned Spanish flu was Miranda's 10 year old daughter Eva, who died as a result of getting sick. After Eva's death, Miranda wandered into the caves to end her own life but came across a black substance. Upon touching a mass growing from the black substance, the root, Miranda was overcome with knowledge seeing memories of all the people who had died in the village. Miranda realised that the mould, the Megamyce it was also referred to as, had absorbed the consciousness of everyone who had died in the village over centuries, including her daughter Eva after they were buried. The mould effectively consumed their bodies, their DNA and their consciousness. Uh, a kind of data storage. Anyway, after a life-changing experience in the caves, Miranda brainwashed the villagers into abandoning their original faith and following her as a prophet of the Black God. They became a pagan cult calling her mother Miranda. This crest is seen throughout the houses in the village. Miranda would use her gift of mimicry and transformation to disguise herself as the old woman so she could spy on the villagers. Over the next few decades, Miranda would implant the villagers with a worm-type parasite which had been genetically altered by the mold called a cadeau, which is Romanian for gift, also close to the French translation which is cadeau. This is why the bakers constantly referred to Evelyn's infection as her gift, as it all stemmed from the cadeau parasite. Miranda would create a lab to conduct research on the mold. Her research? She wanted to use the cadeau to create a perfect vessel and combine it with the remains of her daughter's consciousness in the mold and essentially resurrect Eva. After the villagers had been implanted with this cadeau, pretty much all of them either died or transformed into lichens. The lichens were basically failed cadeau test subjects who were banished from the village so they wouldn't kill all the other villagers, as this would hinder Miranda's research. As a result, the lichens made their den in the stronghold, only coming out at night to kill the livestock. There were, however, four particular test subjects who showed the most promise. So in this village there were four families, or kings, who founded and ruled over the entire village and the region for many years. 
There were four descendants of these kings or families who were also given the Kadu and showed the greatest potential, becoming the vessel for Eva. These descendants were Lady Alcina Domitresc, Donna Beneviento, Salvatore Moreau, and Karl Heisenberg. Let's do a little bit of character study. Alcina Domitresc was the Countess of the Castle. She suffered from a hereditary blood disease, which basically translates as her being a vampire. Although she didn't actually live in the village until around the 1950s, she took ownership of the castle from her descendants. At some point after she settled in the castle, she was lured underneath the cemetery by Miranda and was surgically implanted with the Cadu to test her affinity, which measures how well a substance combines with another. She was sent for observation and as a result of her Cadu implantation, she became mutated with regenerative abilities. She could turn her nails into long, razor-sharp claws and retract them again in seconds, and she could also turn into this. This also halted her aging. However, due to her vampirism and her need for a constant supply of blood, she developed a condition called porphyria, a blood disease which affects a group of chemicals being produced in the body needed to make up hemoglobin. Anyway, science lesson over. Due to this condition and the constant need to keep her health in check, Miranda saw Lady Domitresc as a failed experiment and an unfit vessel for Ava. Miranda also implanted the Cadu parasite into three female corpses belonging to maids who worked in the castle. Alcina observed the transformation and she documented this. It appears that the Cadu laid eggs, which produced blowfly-type organisms in all three corpses, which devoured the flesh going on to mimic their human appearance, changing colour to make a believable human appearance. Another document mentions that these flies need to consume meat, as they are carnivorous, and it also explains that these flies are weak to sudden drops in temperature. When Ethan shot the window during his fight with Daniela, the flies attempted to hibernate, making them vulnerable to attack. Due to this trait, the three daughters were trapped in the castle. These three organisms became Alcina's daughters and were named Bella, Cassandra and Daniela. Pretty creepy when you realise they're made just entirely of flies but with an attached consciousness. In order to support herself financially, Alcina took control of the family vineyards and winemaking business. However, to enrich the flavour, Alcina would use the blood of her maids and servants, as well as using the blood to sustain herself and her daughters. Over the years, Alcina and her daughters would employ a steady stream of servants and consume them using their blood to create a signature brand of wine called Sanguinis Virginis, which is Latin for maiden's blood. The women who were drained of their blood were turned into Maruaika and Samka, while the males were turned into scarecrows in the vineyard. Perhaps the black sheep of all the four lords in terms of physical alteration and mutation, Donna Beneviento lived up high in the mountain, residing in House Beneviento. Not much is known of her family, apart from the fact that her parents committed suicide while she was young. She seemed to have a sister, Bernadette Beneviento, who died after Cadu implantation by Miranda failed. It's also unknown whether Claudia Beneviento was a daughter of Donna or a sister, as Claudia died in 1996, aged 9. Due to the fact that Donna's parents committed suicide during her childhood, Donna was suffering from an undiagnosed mental illness, but this exacerbated her mental health and led to her becoming a recluse. This is also due to Donna possessing a huge scar on her face. She covered her face whilst in public. And this leads us on to Angie. This doll was made for Donna by her father before his suicide, and she talked to it frequently, even preferring to communicate to others through Angie instead of herself. Anyway, it soon came to be Donna's turn for Cadu implantation by Miranda. Although Donna didn't mutate in a drastically physical way, she did have a good level of affinity. Donna developed an ability where she was able to produce and secrete a substance, allowing her to control plants infected by the mold. This effect on the mind is frequently shown during Ethan's visit to House Beneviento, as well as seeing the flowers around the house and the grounds. Ethan witnesses terrifying hallucinations, including a massively deformed newborn baby. This is down to Donna's plants unlocking Ethan's darkest fears. In this case, that Rose would be turned into a mutated monster and seeing what he thought was his deceased wife, Mia. This is a similar sight seen by the gardener when he was asked to plant the infected flowers. Miranda, however, saw Donna as mentally underdeveloped and an unfit vessel for her daughter's consciousness. This didn't stop Miranda from inviting her to the Four Lords Council, however, and even making her an adoptive daughter, much to the delight of her gardener. Donna seems to be the only one of the Four Lords that doesn't experiment on people or dead bodies with a Cadu. She seems to spread it amongst her many dolls, which could then be controlled by Donna, as seen in the Beneviento boss fight. Salvatore Moreau is the most mysterious of the Four Lords. The game doesn't really give us many obvious clues as to his background. We see that he possesses a tattoo on his arm of what looks like a jellyfish with the word mother on a scroll, as well as another tattoo of an anchor on his forearm. This may signal to us that Moreau was a fisherman or even a sailor. 
Like with all the rest, Moreau's turn for Cadu implantation came up, but this went wrong due to his low affinity with the Cadu, and this reaction turned him into a grotesque fish monster with webbed hands and feet. In Miranda's notes, it states that Moreau has a regular cell division, which may explain why we see the green goo all over the place and the fact that Moreau is always throwing up. Moreau's devotion to Mother Miranda is obvious, he sees her as his real mother and he's constantly trying to impress her, but he has little to no self-esteem due to his appearance. Moreau's desperation to be seen as favourable by Miranda and the other lords is showcased when Ethan takes the flask and Moreau pleads with him not to because the other lords will think he's incompetent and he has fears that Mother Miranda will reject him. He seems to hang out in his reservoir most of the time and only comes out for council meetings with the other lords. Moreau was one of the lords who attempted heavy experimentation with the Cadu, infecting villagers in his lab near the reservoir. In a note in the reservoir, we can see that Moreau infected a villager with the Cadu, who had almost turned into a lichen, and this villager was sent to the lab. Arriving at the lab, we can see another note stating that Moreau tried putting wolf blood into the spine of what could be the villager turned lichen that was sent to the lab. This likely created the Varkalak the wolf-type creatures first encountered when heading to Moreau's reservoir. Unlike Lady Domitresque, Moreau isn't actually able to control his transformation. Therefore, Miranda considered him an unfit vessel for Eva. Karl Heisenberg is the very first of the four lords that Ethan comes across. He is the last of the four lords and runs the Heisenberg factory located outside of the village. Heisenberg was kidnapped by Miranda as a child and subjected to Cadu implantation. His affinity with the Cadu, according to Miranda, is the most favourable of all the lords. Miranda mentions that Heisenberg has internal organs closely identical to that of the Narca Japonica, which is the Japanese sleep array. These organs have electrical properties which allow Heisenberg to control magnetic fields with his entire body. Miranda was also impressed with Heisenberg's abilities, calling him a splendid specimen, but he is still an unfit vessel for Miranda's daughter Eva. Heisenberg despised the other lords, calling Lady Domitresque a lady supersized bitch, Donna Beneviento ugly ass psycho doll, and Moreau a moronic freak. He would constantly argue with Lady Domitresque. It seemed that anyone who came into the village from the outside was captured and taken before Miranda and the Four Lords, and judging from the amount of skeletons Ethan encounters after evading Heisenberg's traps, it's clear that Miranda favours Heisenberg. Despite Heisenberg being Miranda's clear favourite, much to the disgust of Lady Domitresque, Heisenberg hated Miranda for what she did to him and how she took his body for her selfish purpose and stripped him of his dignity. He knows that himself and the other Lords are just a bunch of failed experiments to Miranda, and he plots to kill her. Heisenberg was carrying out inhumane experiments with the Cadu in his factory in order to build an army to take down and kill Miranda. Some notable subjects are Sturm, the propeller head guy, and the series of Soldat mutants. Heisenberg came up with a plan to use Rose to kill Miranda, but what that plan entailed we don't know, as Ethan refused to even entertain using his own daughter as a weapon. They all turned out to be failed test subjects in the end, but Miranda still thought that they had a purpose. They did still technically have some form of power over the region, and they formed a council together. So with Miranda's four lords being unfit vessels for Eva, Miranda was eventually approached by the Connections, the organisation that Mia was secretly working for. Miranda gave the Connections some of Eva's DNA and a sample of the mould, and they created Evelyn. However, Evelyn was defective. She aged rapidly due to her needing a regular serum, as her cells reproduced at an accelerated rate. In her lab, we can see pictures of Miranda working with the Connections. In one picture, she is holding a baby Evelyn, and in another, she can be seen posing for a photo with Evelyn, Alan, and Mia. Now, we all know what happens next, the events of Resident Evil 7 play out. So, what happened to Zoe Baker after Resident Evil 7? We know that she was saved by her Uncle Joe with the help of Ethan and Mia, and we have a document which shows an incident report written by Zoe. It states that after she was rescued, she was taken to a BSAA facility, only to find out that she had been put on the list of the deceased. She was being held in quarantine. She reported that there was a cover-up by the BSAA of a natural gas leak which killed the Bakers. She mentions that someone is keeping the truth hidden. She fears that because her name was on the list of victims, that this organisation would kill her. Instead, they gave her a new identity and let her go. The new identity was apparently for her own safety, as she had witnessed what Evelyn was, Zoe could be considered a dangerous person, and the connections had likely earmarked her for assassination. Zoe mentioned that she attempted to contact Ethan and Mir to say thank you, but they were nowhere to be found. She then mentions that she's going to investigate the BSAA, as she believed they know where Ethan and Mia are, and she also wanted to dig up information on what the BSAA is hiding regarding the Baker incident. As well as finding out what we already know from Resident Evil 7, Zoe found out from the BSAA incident report that the entire Dolby incident, along with innocent civilians being infected, 
was caused due to the BSAA's failure to eliminate Evelyn in Munich. This is why Evelyn was being transported to Central America, so that the Connections could protect their bioweapon. The report goes on to state that the Connections are a crime syndicate, they don't have a headquarters, so can't really be traced. This organisation was founded by none other than Brandon Bailey. If you're not, if you aren't sure who Brandon Bailey is, he's one of the founding members of the Umbrella Corporation, along with Oswell E. Spencer. He was mainly based in Africa, working on the progenitor virus, which went on to cause the Raccoon City outbreak. Given that Brandon Bailey spent so much time with Oswell E. Spencer, that's probably how he came to know of Miranda and her work. Anyway, Spencer and Bailey basically fell out after having different visions for the company, and Bailey started the connections. This report states that Bailey's direct motivation wasn't science or advancing evolution, it was purely for commercial gain, manufacturing and selling bioweapons basically. Zoe includes the transcripts from the BSAA interviews with Ethan and Mia. Ethan's interview mentions them moving him and Mia to Europe. Mia's, well, that's a bit more interesting. It seems that Ethan still has no clue that Mia is involved. Is Ethan really that naive? Oh well, anyway, Zoe mentions that two years on from the incident, she has been working as a reporter in New Orleans. She says that she has received a letter from Mia saying that they've had a daughter. After Resident Evil 7, Ethan and Mia were relocated to Europe by the BSAA. This was apparently for their own safety as they had witnessed atrocities caused by the Connections, who created Evelyn. Similar to Zoe Baker, the BSAA feared that they too would be assassination targets of the Connections, so therefore placed the Winters under witness protection. Ethan and Mia were expecting, and Rosemary Winters was born on the 2nd of August 2020. We see a flashback which shows Ethan on the phone to the Doctor, who wants Ethan and Mia to come in and discuss their daughter's test results. Mia looks visibly concerned at this point, as of course, she knows the secret, that Ethan is basically dead and made up of mould. Mia is trying to sweep the Baker incident under the rug, and flat out doesn't want to talk about it. I guess she is concerned that they would do scans on Ethan, and figure out that he isn't normal. That's why she says it's not Rose she is worried about, it's Ethan. Anyway, shortly after this conversation, Mira is abducted by Miranda and imprisoned in her lab, so that Miranda can infiltrate the Winter's home and kidnap Rose. Miranda mentions in her diary that she learned of Rose's location due to the connections. Now, me personally, I don't believe this is literal. I think that she means that the mess they caused around the whole Baker incident caused Ethan and Mira to become infected, and then conceive a moulded super baby who is basically Evelyn's successor. Miranda was probably able to see Rosemary's existence through the network of consciousness that the mole provided. After she had Rose and crystallised her body and separated her into the four flasks, she had no more need for the villagers in order to aid her search for the perfect vessel, so she unleashed the lichens on the village, which is why everyone is dead or in hiding when Ethan arrives there. It's clear that Miranda doesn't need her four lords anymore either. Miranda set Ethan up, wanting to see how strong he was and at the same time using him to kill the four lords for her. In the end, Miranda's plan failed, as Rose's powers were so great that when Miranda tried to use Rose to bring her daughter's consciousness back, Rose was able to reject it and attack Miranda, draining her power via the mould. We see Rose at the end. She's visiting her father's grave, but years now seem to have passed. Now the question is this, how long has it been? Rose must be, what, 18 years old here at least? Is it 2039 now, or has Rose got the same defect that Evelyn had and that she ages faster? Or could it be that this scene takes place after the events of Resident Evil 9? I guess we'll just have to wait to find out. So going back to the Zoe Baker report for a second. Zoe says that she finds another letter in her mailbox after reading the letter from Mia. A letter with the BSAA logo on it addressed to Chris Redfield. The letter states that the BSAA have been concerned with Chris's recent activity. It states that Chris has been accessing top secret documents without permission. As we know, Chris Redfield turned up at the end of Resident Evil 7, working for the BSAA, and was begrudgingly having to work alongside Blue Umbrella. Now, over the years after failing to take out Evelyn in Munich and the Dolby incident that followed, the BSAA tried extremely hard to cover their tracks, using a gas leak as a cover story, all the while refusing to take accountability for their mistakes. They chose to sweep this incident under the rug and cover it up rather than come clean. Their motivation for the cover-up was clear, not just to save face, but also because they were backed by the United Nations. They had some heavy hitters behind them, and without the backing of the United Nations, the BSAA would likely crumble. Due to this cover-up, Chris began to lose trust in the BSAA. Over the next three years, Chris was a part of the elite Hound Wolf squad in the BSAA. Chris spent the next few years with his ear to the ground, following up leads on the mould, and finally gets a breakthrough. They'd received intelligence that Miranda knew the location of Ethan and Mia, as well as Rose, and had kidnapped Mia in order to infiltrate the Winter's home for the sole purpose of abducting Rose. Without BSAA headquarters authorization, Chris took control of the squad and went rogue. 
their purpose to go after Miranda. In the letter to Chris, the BSAA ask who Miranda is, but on the back of the letter, the words, it's not over, are scribbled onto the back. Did Chris send this letter to Zoe in case something happened to him in Europe, so the truth wouldn't be buried? Chris's suspicions of the BSAA are amplified when he realises that they sent bioweapons to the village. But why? Well, we'll get to those theories at the end of this video. We learn that Ethan really died back in Resident Evil 7, and this, right here, is the exact moment that he died. It seems that from the moment Ethan stepped into the Baker's guest house, he was done for. He was already infected. Jack's now infamous majestic curb stomp gave Ethan severe brain damage, but Ethan woke up due to the mold repairing his cells and regained consciousness just as he was being dragged into the main house. During Ethan's hallucination of Evelyn, she also mentions this. You mean you didn't think it was weird? <laughs> no matter how much you got hurt? This was always something that I found odd. Ethan literally had his hand sawed off by Mia, stapled back on by Zoe Baker, and of course it worked perfectly afterwards. He was curb stomped by Jack, slashed by Molded, fell from great heights, even had his freaking leg chopped off, and he was still fine. This brutal treatment continued into Village, as Ethan had his fingers bitten off, had his other hand cut off by Lady Domitresque, which he reattached, was stabbed by Lady Domitresque, fell from great heights over and over again, had his heart ripped out, and still not hurt. Due to the mold having regenerative properties, this gave Ethan great healing powers. Now the fact that Ethan was technically dead means that this scene makes a whole lot more sense now. We find a secret cave that is full of mold. At the bottom, the same antique coin and weapons chest from Dolby and a laptop which states that the mold found in the village is a 99.95% match to the Mutamycete in Dolby. This mold here is revealed to be the source of it all. The laptop also states that the mold is a network of consciousness. This explains why Jack was able to communicate with Ethan whilst Ethan was trapped in the mold on the ship. This leads us back onto the mold. So we learn this is the source where it all started. No one really knows how old it is, but what we do know is that it was discovered in 1919 by Miranda. It had lived under the village likely for centuries. The root of the Mutamycete is this weird looking fetus growth suspended in the air underneath the village. Now why does it look like this? No one knows really as its origins cannot be traced any further back than 1919. This fetus looking thing is referred to as the fungal root. This is the Black God, the object of worship for the cultist villagers and its prophet, Mother Miranda. When Miranda touched the mold, she essentially merged with it, becoming sort of like a host. When Miranda died, this is why Ethan started to crystallise, the same way as enemies did in the Baker House and the same way as the Four Lords. Either way, a growth was then triggered in the root which caused it to consume the entire village. This was likely a defence mechanism in the mould as it tried to prevent itself from dying by consuming whatever was left to regain its strength. This resurgence was halted by Ethan detonating the bomb planted by Chris Redfield. The destruction of the fungal root was successful, but as a result, this caused all mould infected victims to die too. Throughout the village, we keep seeing a familiar sight, the unmistakable umbrella logo, but what are they doing here? In the lab, we find a letter on the side which is from a person who got lost on a hiking expedition and Miranda took this half-dead person in from the cold. This person, a medical student, studied with Miranda and she became a mentor to them. This person was none other than Oswell E. Spencer, who he mentioned earlier, the founding member and CEO of the Umbrella Corporation. If you don't know who the Umbrella Corporation are, then seriously, go and play Resident Evil 0, 1, 2 and 3 and then come back. I'm just kidding. It would be awesome to say that the Umbrella Corporation were massively involved and helped Miranda, but no, nope, that's not what happened at all. In this letter, Spencer mentions that they had differing goals. Miranda's was to bring back a single person, whereas Spencer's was to make the next step in human evolution. Spencer mentions that he's leaving the village and going on an expedition to Africa to research the progenitor virus. Spencer also mentions that he's starting a company with friends called Umbrella, and we all know how that one turned out. He mentions that he'll use the logo that he and Miranda found in the caves for his company logo, and that's pretty much it. He learned a lot about mutation, biology, and replication of life forms, stole a logo, and started a company, instead focusing on creating a virus rather than using the mold. And lastly, we move on to the lovable but extremely obese Duke. As many of you know, the Duke is a direct nod to the Resident Evil 4 merchant, even stating that he's friends with a Resident Evil 4 merchant. Now it appears that Duke does business with the other lords, even having a special room in each area and we find a note in the castle saying Lady Domitresque has a meeting with the Duke. 
We find a note just after defeating the second giant which states that the merchant would bring old newspapers from the outside world to a man named Ernest, even though everything from the outside world was forbidden. It seems that Miranda needed her brainwashing to be consistently strong and didn't want the villagers to be distracted by outside events. The Duke seems to appear human, but upon Ethan asking the Duke who or what he is, the Duke responds by telling him that even he can't answer that question. This may indicate that the Duke is omnipresent, meaning he is available wherever is needed, moving quickly to a different location. Where there's coin to be made. He also seems to know everything about Miranda's plans too. Did he survive the blast? I mean, it's likely, given that he's able to move quickly to other locations. Or is the Duke made from mould himself? So to finish, this game opened up a few theories, especially at the end when Chris told the pilot to set a course for BSAA Europe HQ. Chris has seemingly lost all trust in them now. These theories have been rattling around in my brain for a few days now, but here are a few. So, at the end of Resident Evil 7 in Not A Hero, we find out that Lucas Baker was sending information to a different company and planning to betray the connections. Now, it's possible that he was either sending the data to the BSAA or Blue Umbrella at the end of Resident Evil 7. The BSAA were there to eliminate Lucas Baker and recover the data, tying up any loose ends in the process. However, Chris didn't know this. In the Not A Hero DLC, he did seem suspicious at the fact that the BSA were working together with Blue Umbrella. The BSA relocated the Winters to a location in Europe which just happened to be right next to the village. They could have chosen anywhere in the whole of Europe. Very suspicious. Then the BSA sent bioweapons to the village instead of soldiers. Why? Well, it could be because Chris led that rogue squad of BSAA operatives on the mission, and Zoe Baker says that she saw a letter from the BSAA asking Redfield what the hell he's up to. I believe that the BSAA sent these bioweapons to the village to take out Chris and his squad, as they were beginning to know too much. Why would the BSAA send their own human soldiers to try and take down an elite squad of soldiers? I think that's why they sent bioweapons, to prevent losses of their own soldiers. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think of the theories, or any theories that you may have about what's going to happen next. But anyway, that is it for this one. If you've watched till the end, you're the real MVP. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. But for now, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.